The world is so full of a number of things. I'm sure we should all be as happy as kings. Robert Louis Stevenson. But not everybody agrees with him. Did you know that the French are the unhappiest people in Europe? <laughs> There is a study published by the PEW Institute last year saying that only 14% of French believe in a brighter future. This is not a lot. On the contrary, 70% of Belgians believe in the future. They are in the top 10 of the happiest people in Europe. Big applause for the Belgium. <laughs> And you, you here, are you more, more like the French or like the Belgians? I'm going, I'm going to show you a slide. You will have three seconds to read it. Three, two, one. Okay. So, who has read Happiness is Nowhere? <laughs> okay, half of the room. You are sad people like the French. <laughs> And who has read Happiness is Now Here? You are Belgians for sure. <laughs> But, what is happiness, anyway? According to social science, happiness is a mixture of two things. The way you feel about your life and the way you are in the day-to-day -day basis. So I have a good news and a bad news for you. The bad news is that happiness is genetically determined. That means some of us have the genes of happiness and some of us don't. But, with a little bit of effort, that can be balanced. So today, I'm going to show you how to train your brain for happiness. Think of it like you think of your weight. If you, if you eat a certain level of food, or a certain amount of food, and you exercise a little, your weight is going to be, your body is going to settle at a certain weight. If you decide to exercise more, or eat less, your body is going to adjust. Okay? If that new way of eating and exercising has become a part of your, daily day, of your daily routine, this is going to become your new weight. But if you decide to go back to the way you were eating or exercising before, you're going to go back to the weight you have when you started. So it goes with happiness. And scientists have shown that as it is more difficult to lose weight when you get older, it is also more difficult to be happy when you get older at least in the first part of your life. To illustrate this, scientists from the University of Warwick in UK have interviewed 500,000 people in America and in Western Europe. And they found that happiness has a shape. A U-shape. So what does it say? At the beginning of our life, when we are teenagers, in our 20s, we are the happiest. Okay, then we're still okay at 30, and then happiness falls down to its, low, its lowest level. Between 40 and 50, we are living the unhappiest moment of our life. That's why we call that a midlife crisis. And then when we are 50, happiness increases again. So, scientists are telling me, with a smiley, <laughs> who just turned 40, that I'm here in the happiness curve. <laughs> that means that I'm touching rock bottom. But even if I'm French, I don't feel like this. My, happy, my smiley of happiness is more like this one. That means that happiness always at a decent level with a slight but constant increase with age. So where is that difference coming from? When you look deeper in the study, you see that the people between 30 and 50, they have something in common. They have a disease, a self-inflicted disease called misplaced nostalgia. You heard that before. That was the good old days. That was so great in the good old days. Why can't we go back in the good old days? By mourning the good old days, they are killing their life satisfaction. And the weird thing is that those good old days might or might not be during their lifetime. So, 
What is important to see is that today I'm going to show you how to train your brain for happiness. And the basic principle is to realize that the good old days are now, like today, right now. And the first lesson is stop dwelling on the past. So look at me. What do you see when you look at me? Okay. <laughs> so with the boobs and the ass I have, you cannot miss that I'm a woman. Okay. You know that I'm French, and it's confirmed by my, my accent. If you read the program, you probably know that I have a PhD in physical chemistry, that I have a job. To make a point, I'm going to tell you that I have lived in six different countries in my life, and I know I live in Belgium, and that I'm married. So, oh, sorry, I forgot, I'm black, right? So everybody can see that. So, a black woman, educated, immigrant, married, is standing in front of you. You have paid to listen to her. <laughs> you even think that you're going to have a nice time. With a little bit of luck, she's going to open your horizon. Do you realize how aberrant is that, historically speaking? Let's time travel. And we're now in the 18th century. And you look at me, and I ask you the same question. Why do you see when you look at me? Back in the days, your answer would have been this. A slave. That means you would have looked at me now and thinking that someone owns me and I'm, I'm waiting for him to come. Or you are at an auction and you can buy me. You probably would have paid a good price for me. I mean, I'm pretty amazing, right? <laughs> <laughs> but that was completely normal back in the days. That even is called the good old days for some people. So, okay, I can read your mind. She's exaggerating. The good old days were not that far in time, right? So let's go to the second lesson, which is consider every opportunity. We're going to we'll come closer and talk about the 20th century. I'm going to talk to you about my job. So I've studied 10 years to become a cleaning lady. Not a random cleaning lady, a high-tech cleaning lady. What does it mean? That means that for 15 years of my life, I have developed new processes to clean the waste provoked by industries. So at the beginning, I was cleaning wastewater. Then I started cleaning waste due to industrial processes. And then, because I was tired of cleaning, I moved upstream to change the process that that company are using to avoid the pollution I was cleaning from the start. So, Take those 15 years of my life and put them at the beginning of the 20th century. That would have been impossible. First of all, because till 1967, at least in France, women needed to ask the permission to their husband to have a job. Okay? So some of them did get the permission, and they contributed to progress of science, for example, like Marie Curie. But that was quite unusual. Second of all, because till 1924, women couldn't have the same education as men. Why educate a woman when the only thing she needs to know is cooking, cleaning, educating kids, right? And the third reason is that because at the beginning of the 20th century, nobody cared about the about environment. With the Industrial Revolution, who cared? But this is because, and probably out of ignorance, that people didn't care in the past, that today scientific like, scientists like me are needed. And this is because scientists always look forward that innovation happens. This is because scientists always take every opportunity for innovation that a new chapter of chemistry has been invented in the 20th century, which is green chemistry. It is now the foundation of the modern chemistry. And so you should live your life like scientists. If they were looking always on how it was before, they could not make our life better. Let's go to the third lesson. Don't take life too seriously. Imagine that when you, the act of standing up or sitting down cannot be done without pain. Imagine that you wake up and picking, keep picking up something from the floor. You cannot do it without pain. Imagine that even uh, walking in the streets, you cannot do it without pain. 
you're, you are thinking, that's called being old. But imagine that you are 30 years old. That happened to me. The pain was so intense that when I was walking in the street, elderly people were faster than me. Do you know how humiliating it is to race with your grandmother and lose? <laughs> so I remember the pain was so intense that when I was at work, the idea of going to the toilet was just, it was just impossible. When you think about it, you are sitting at your desk, you're working on your computer. To go to the toilet, you have to stand up, painful, go to the toilet, painful, sit down on your toilet seat, painful, go to the sink to wash your hands, man, you have to do it all the time, painful, and go back to your desk, working, painful, and sit down again, painful. So obviously, something was really wrong with me, and I did need to have my two hips replaced. So eight hours surgery after three months of hospital and one year of physiotherapy, I look like this, Robocop, <laughs> or the bionic woman. Never mind, the bionic woman. Do you know Super Jamie? Okay. You're not too young, that's okay. <laughs> so, do you think it's cool? Of course it's cool. No, it's not cool. Especially if you want to go through security at the airport. <laughs> or if you trigger the thief alarm of a jewelry. I'm black, remember? <laughs> so, anyway, the, today, the pain that you feel after that surgery makes you really, really grateful to live in the good new days. Because we have efficient painkiller. So back in the days, I would be in the wheelchair right now. Because the, the surgery and my recovery has been possible because of the progress of material engineering, the progress of surgical skills, the progress of physiotherapy, and th this progress happened in the last two decades. So that's why I don't live in the past. My last lesson for the day is use the past to shape your future. Whatever happens to you in the past, to that moment, that right moment, is helping you to shape every moment of your life in the future. Did I tell you that my husband is German? No. In the late 40s, being French, in love with a German, I would have been dragged out of my house, shaved, undressed, and humiliated in front of everybody, because I would have been co considered as a collaborator. Did I tell you that my husband was white? Yeah, of course, you don't care, you're telling me my aunt. But interracial relationship was the long-lasting long uh, segregation, legal one, that was in the US, for example. It has been uh, banned in 1967, which is not that far away. In Europe, the ban was not that strong, but you are being ostracized for being with someone with another uh, race. So when I see people like this, I always thinking it had to be tough for them at the beginning. So today I can leave my relationship, my love freely, because people have paved the way for me. So I was telling you I use the past to shape my future. When you want to apply for a job in the US or in the UK, what I do, because they have this quota policy, you have to fill in a form, a form that says in which minority you're part of. So me, I use, I use what happened to women to click the box woman, minority. Huh? I use what happened to the black in the past to click black. And I use my medical history to click disabled. So what is the chance that someone with my qualification, who applies to the same job than me, can click these three boxes? I can get any job I want. <laughs> so now you. You, I can understand that people moan the good old days. Me, there's, this, there's stuff that I'm missing from the good old days. This, for example, the time where curvy women were the standard of beauty. But it's also the time where beating his wife was legal, and psychologists were saying that a wife who is beaten is a masochist who provokes her husband to be beaten. So don't forget that when you look at the good old days, saying that they're, so, that they're so good, you look at them with a bias. You forget the, 
the bad stuff that happened during those days. So now you know that looking at the good old days, they are not that good, as you remember. Being not white was not that good. Being not a man was not that good. Being sick was not that good. Being in love with the wrong person was not that good. So you see that the good old days are not so good. You look at them with a bias. And now that you know how to train your brain for happiness, I have a dream that you all go and create those good old days, those moments that in a couple of years you're going to call the good old days. Thank you. <laughs>